Hi everyone, this is Natasha Wilkes from High Performance Vets. In this brief video, I want to talk to you about confidence. Now, I've noticed on a lot of the Facebook forums that I've been on lately that there's a lot of vets out there who are very talented and very skilled and very great at what they do, but they're lacking confidence. And I've also noticed the same thing from a lot of new and recent graduates. Now I get that, I remember what it was like being a new grad and being a recent grad. Sometimes it was absolutely terrifying, thinking I have this case coming in or I've got this emergency coming down, I don't know what to do. Confidence is really important because confidence underpins your professional skills. Confidence is actually linked to competence. So confidence is your belief in your abilities. Competence is your skills, both your knowledge, how you apply that knowledge to build skills, and then how you consistently use and apply those skills to build experience. So it's perfectly normal when you first graduate to have a lot of knowledge, but not have as much skills or experience perfectly normal and that's what your first few years are about well actually you know a good three to five years plus I mean I am nearly what am I coming up to 20 years out and there's still a lot of areas I need to improve my knowledge and skills in so what this short video was about is about confidence so a lack of confidence impacts everything it affects your mindset where you don't have belief in yourself and there's a lot of self-doubt and you hear a lot about imposter syndrome. It can be that you believe when something's coming in, I don't have the skills for it or I don't know what to do. And those beliefs can hamper what goes on forward, what goes on for you in practice. What that means is if you know you've got a case coming down or a certain client and you're lacking confidence, you may not be willing to see that client or take over that case. And then you're not actually building skills and experience. Also, in other areas of your professional skills, lacking confidence actually impacts your ability to build competence. And like I said, they're linked. So when you do something that's challenging, and you finish it, you're like, wow, I actually did that. I've now got experience. It may not be much experience, but you've done it. And what it does is it's a figure of eight. So I've built some competence and that impacts your confidence positively. And then when you have more confidence, then you want to, to do that again. Now, sometimes you don't want to do that again. It wasn't a very fun procedure. But the more you do it, the more skills you build. And then the more you do it, so the more skills you build. So it becomes a figure of eight and it becomes an upward projection as well. And that's how you become experienced. I remember when I first graduated doing spays and castrations and dentals and lumps. They were all quite terrifying in the beginning. But because I kept doing it, because I didn't avoid doing it, but I kept doing it over and over, it got easier because I built skills. It's like when you first learn to drive a car. You can't drive the car and listen to the radio and change the gears at the same time. You just have to focus on driving. And eventually, the more you keep doing it, then you can turn the corner, indicate, and change the gears at the same time. You still may not be able to talk or have the radio on, and that's okay because you've got to the next level of competence. And then doing it over and over and over again, eventually you drive home and you think, oh, I don't even remember driving home. It just becomes so fluid for you because the challenge meets your skill. And that's why it's really important to have confidence because the other thing about confidence is it impacts your ability to have those conversation with clients. If you're not confident, it actually affects your communication. It affects your body language and unintentionally, if you're not confident, you can actually pass it on to clients and they begin to doubt your skills. That's not a good thing. Also, you may find you don't go for the jobs you want because you don't think you have the skills. And if you're lacking confidence, you may not be able to do the workups that you're supposed to be doing, doing the procedures that help you build further skill and when it comes to salary negotiation time or performance review your figures may not be good 
you may not be doing the work that is expected of you for your experience level or for how many years you've been out. And what happens then is you're not getting paid what you believe you are worth. And it can also be you just don't even negotiate a decent salary. So confidence impacts everything. So what I want you to do is the next time you do something, write it down. It can even start at, I did a vaccination. I successfully got a catheter in. I did that spay. If you're really lacking confidence, start with the basics. A lot of the time we do 10 incredible things per day, but one thing may not go the way we want. And therefore we believe that I can't do this. My skills are no good. I'm a rubbish vet. Or you may have one procedure not go well or one case not go well. And so we globalize it and say, everything was terrible today. And that's an explanatory style and that's also a negativity bias. So you need to be mindful about that. I'll talk to, that, talk to you about that in, in later trainings. But what I want you to realize is be confident. If you're not sure about being confident, look at what you believe about yourself. If you don't believe that you're very good in anything, then look for the hard facts. Have you successfully completed consultations? Uh, tick, you're still employed. Have I successfully done vaccinations, spays, castration, lumps, dentistry, whatever field you were in, whether it's small animal, large animal, exotics, um, equine, whatever it is, you were successfully completing tasks during the day. Because if you weren't, you wouldn't have a job. It's as simple as that. Now, sometimes... There's other things that impacts our confidence. And we don't want to say that I'm confident because you may think, well, I'm arrogant. That's not the case. Confidence is just having that belief in yourself that I can do this or I have the skills to work it out. And we all have those. Now, a little extra tip for the new grads. I know you may not have that much experience at the moment. That's why it's really important to keep putting yourself in the situations where you get those consults, you get those surgeries. Don't worry about the GDVs or the complicated orthopedic procedures yet if you're just starting out. Start on being really good at vaccinations, communicating with clients, your basic skin and ears, your lameness, um, your, your eye cases. Just focus on getting really good skills in spays, castrations, lumps and dentals. Start with those foundation skills and work on those and put your hand up for every one of those procedures if you can. If you're still not sure, start with your tiny little lump and then get your next bigger lump. Don't go for your complicated Marcel tumours yet, okay? And if you have to, keep a book. I mean, everybody should do this. Keep a book. And at the end of every day or even at the end of every morning and then evening if the day is so busy and you forget, Write down what you did well today, what cases had a great outcome. And it's okay to start with, I did a great vaccination. We should never discount the basics. And the basics are vaccinations. They are really great consults to look at what is normal and to build great communication skills and influence skills and relationship building with our clients. Okay? So this video has already turned into a bit longer than I expected it to be. That's typical for me. There's so much I have to say. But I want you to focus on your confidence. And confidence is a result of looking at your skills and believing in yourself. Don't talk yourself down. Don't discount or minimise your skills or your value. You're not doing yourself any favours. And it's okay to say, oh, I did a great job because majority of the time, if you look at every day in your weeks, you've done a fantastic job in practice. Okay, I'll talk to you in the next training. I'm Natasha Walks from High Performance Vets. Got any questions? Put them below. I'll get back to you soon.